Hi, I'm Bebo, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden, published by Luda Creations. Each year, Vernon Cabbage Head, or Mr. Cabbage Head to you, wants nothing more than to be left in peace to grow his award-winning vegetable garden. Unfortunately for him, his tedious neighbors tend to stop by and help themselves to his vegetables while he's away. Can you help Mr. Cabbage Head keep his tiresome neighbors away, tend to his garden, and finally win the illustrious Blue Ribbon? Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden is a game for one or two players, and it takes 15 to 20 minutes to play. The game comes with 45 vegetables, 3 on holiday cards, 10 neighbors, 24 neighbor tokens, and 1 score summary, with 1 beehive and 6 bees. The game also comes with 3 expansions, the New Neighbors, the Grasshoppers expansion, and the Romancing Eudora expansion. To set up the game, you'll first need to lay out three on holiday cards. Then you'll shuffle the 45 vegetable cards and deal 15 of them face down onto each of the on holiday cards. Stack the three decks on top of one another so you have one vegetable deck of 48 total cards, placed within easy reach. Choose four neighbors to play with, and then you'll place them next to your vegetable deck. Take the neighbor tiles and their matching tokens. Shuffle the tiles and make sure that their front faces are not revealed. Then place the beehive next to the play area with the beehive tokens on top of it. Take three of these tokens into your supply in front of you. Then you will want to place the Eudora Brassica tile nearby. You're now ready to play. The game takes place over three rounds, and each round consists of two phases, the planting phase and then the neighbor phase. The planting phase is when vegetables are placed into the garden and when neighbor tokens are revealed. The neighbor phase is when you determine which neighbor is going to interfere with Mr. Cabbage Head's quest for perfection. Each of them has their own vegetable preferences and some are pickier than others. This game is played slightly differently depending on whether there's one or two players. First we'll look at the game when it's played with one player and then we'll go over the small differences for games with two players. The planting phase begins with three cards of the vegetable deck being drawn and revealed. One must be chosen for planting. To plant the card on the left, you must pay one bee token from your supply and return it to the beehive. If there are no bees left in the player's supply, then this card may not be chosen. The card in the center is always free to plant, but if the player chooses to plant the card on the right, then one bee token is earned from the beehive. However, if you already have all of the bees in your supply, then you may not choose this card. There are four numbers on each vegetable card. The number inside of the red frame is the total number of cards within the vegetable deck. The number inside of the blue ribbon is the number of victory points that this vegetable might be worth at the end of the game. The number inside of the black fence determines which card will cause neighbor tokens to be revealed after planting. The number inside of the white circle determines how many neighbor tokens will be revealed after planting. Vegetables are planted in your garden plot with a maximum of six columns and three rows. A maximum of 15 out of these 18 slots will be filled by the end of the third round. Vegetables may be placed anywhere in the garden and they do not need to be placed adjacently. However, the three row plots are not fixed until the first and the third have vegetables placed in them. And the same goes for the first and the sixth column. Once planted, a vegetable may not be moved, but it may be replaced by another vegetable in its place. The removed vegetable then becomes compost and it's worth minus two points at the end of the game. After a vegetable has been planted, the players look at the two remaining cards on the table. The one with the highest number inside of the fence icon is the one which determines how many neighbor tokens are revealed, and the number within the white circle of that card is how many neighbor tokens are turned face up. After the appropriate neighbor tokens have been turned face up, the two remaining cards are discarded and the player proceeds to draw and reveal three more vegetable cards in order to plant again. Once five vegetables have been planted, the on holiday card is removed and the game proceeds into the neighbor phase of the round. Each neighbor interferes with the garden in a different way. The neighbor who has the most neighbor tokens revealed is the one who comes to interfere with the garden. However, if any two neighbors are tied for the most tokens, then they become distracted by one another and have a boring conversation. They decide to not interfere with your garden after all. The vegetable that is chosen by the neighbor is then placed in a discard pile. All neighbor tokens are then turned face down and shuffled again. So, while at the end of the third round, a player might have planted 15 vegetables, there's a good chance that there will be fewer than 15 cards remaining, which could be due to composting when planting or those pesky neighbors interfering. In a game for two players, setup is a little different. Place two holiday cards instead of three and randomly deal 21 vegetable cards on the first and 20 on the second. Then deal the remaining four cards onto the table. Place the second pile on top of that and the first on top of that. 
Set up the neighbors and everything else the same as you would for a one-player game. Placing vegetables in the garden and dealing with neighbors visiting is the same. The only difference in gameplay comes at the end of the planting phase. After choosing a vegetable to plant and revealing neighbor tokens, instead of discarding the other two vegetables, place one under your vegetable deck and pass the other to your opponent in the position of your choice, left, right, or center. The card pass becomes one of three available to the opponent, who then draws and reveals two more vegetable cards. Neighbor tokens are revealed by both players at the end of their planting phase. In the neighbor phase, both players are affected by the neighbor with the most tokens revealed. Even though there is no on holiday card at the bottom of a deck, a final neighbor phase still occurs. At the end of the third round, Mrs. Eudora Brassica and the Garden Club Committee arrive to judge Mr. Cabbage Head's garden for the annual Blue Ribbon Garden Contest. During scoring, only the vegetables which are adjacent to a vegetable of the same kind are scored. In this example, these carrots would be scored. However, this one would not be. They would each be worth three points for a total of 15 points. However, this is not the only way to gain fame. There are several different awards of merit that may be given to any one garden, and a player may achieve multiple of these awards. For example, the player gains 12 points if all four corners of the grid have the same type of vegetable, like so. Or a player might gain 8 points for having at least 5 of the same vegetable type in the garden, and 2 additional points if all of those are adjacent to each other. There are more of these awards, and they're all listed in the rulebook that comes with the game. Once the vegetable points, merit award points, and any lost points from composting have been scored, Mr. Cabbage Head's garden is awarded a ribbon. Surpassing 100 points is what it takes to take home the illustrious blue ribbon and the never-ending envy of all of your neighbors. So roll up your sleeves and dig into the best game about anthropomorphic vegetables planting other vegetables. Plant your vegetables, arrange your garden, and show it off to win the prestigious blue ribbon for Mr. Cabbage Head's garden. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Be Bold Games. Be bold, play games, be you. Happy gaming!